We'll try and dig out more detail, but let's see what India Inc. is making of this budget. Here's Shireen Tau catching up with a lot of CEOs at the CII in Delhi. Well, as we told you right here on CNBC TV 18, the mood was not for a flashy budget. The mood was not for more subsidies. And that's exactly what Finance Minister P. Chidambaram has done. As we told you right here, there would be focus on women and the youth. There is going to be an All India Women's Bank that will be inaugurated in October. And there has been a surcharge on the superage. All of that is what we broke right here on CNBC TV 18 to discuss the findings. Joining me here at the Confederation of Indian Industry, our leaders of India Inc., Adi Godrej, President of CII. Let me ask ask you your thoughts on the budget it's a realistic practical budget but perhaps falls short on the levers to really push investment to really push growth it has managed to at least deliver on the numbers for fiscal consolidation whether the math will add up or not it's a separate story but he's delivered on the promise but not enough by way of levers to generate growth and jumpstart the economy you think no I think it is a growth oriented budget I think some of the emphasis on development is strong. De of course, the emphasis on inclusiveness is also strong. I like the emphasis on agriculture, but ex especially technological inputs into agriculture, science and technology, space. So I think the emphasis on the expenditure side was the right one. And I think the fact that he wants to make sure that the subsidies by the end of the UPA term yeah. are clearly given on the Aadhaar So for FY14, subsidies being pegged at about 2% of GDP. I think now we have to see the detailed numbers yeah. because what is very good is if we can make these inclusiveness and development oriented expenditures mm. and yet keep the deficit at 4.8%. I think that's very good news. We have to see how we will manage that probably with a considerable reduction in the uh, in the subsidies hmm. and perhaps there, there a large seem amount to be a in there doesn't divestiture. seem to be a significant reduction in subsidies uh, of course over the year there is as far as petrol subsidies are concerned being pegged at about 65000 crore rupees for fertilizer 65971 crore rupees food subsidy at 90000 crore what rupees the, what is the disinvestment the, the disinvestment target, target is 40000 crore 40, rupees spectrum auction once again 40000 crore rupees which of course for even this year he's fallen short it's disinvestment but he's, he can, he's he more can or less made it up in disinvestment if he wishes to if you start disinvestment in april you can make it up but overall i would say that it's a welcome budget it will be growth oriented and i think the announcement on gst was very important because if gst can come sometime during the next financial year that itself will add to growth and also revenue uh, Sunil Munjala, as far as the GST is concerned, he has made a first installment budgeted 9,000 crore rupees saying that this is my way of getting the states to come on board. Do you actually see GST being a reality? Do you think that by the winter session perhaps we can see him bring in the constitutional amendment bill and the GST bill? Actually, in the last 8 to 10 weeks, as you know, there have been a series of meetings between the states, the empowered committee and, and the finance ministry and the finance minister. The general mood and movement seems to be good. Uh, I'm hoping it will happen before the end of the next fiscal, actually, uh, which is what he's indicating. That's why he's putting uh, 9,000 crores out there. Yeah. Uh, if it does, it has a very good multiplier effect, uh, both on, on growth and on revenues. But let's be realistic. This is a government going into yeah. an election. This yeah. is a government trying to convince state governments where a whole host of them, uh, it's not Congress-led. Do you really believe that uh, state governments are going to want to hand them the GST on a platter in this fashion? Yeah, I think the state governments will not hand it to the center. I think the state governments will get what they want out of it and then accept it. Okay. So it's, I think it's going to be good for both sides. Rajiv they may, they may end up putting out more money than they had planned. Okay. But I think it will work. Rajiv Mamani, as far as the tax is concerned, royalty, we've actually seen the taxes go up. Excise, as was the expectation, nothing has been done. Customs, not much has actually changed there. He's done what everyone was fearing he would do, the tax on the super rich in uh, the form of a 10% surcharge. I think 10% is not something that people were expecting. They were expecting at least 5%, 10%. Perhaps more than what was being anticipated? Yeah, I think perhaps more than what was anticipated. I'll just take 30 seconds on GST. But my personal view was I was probably expecting a more emphatic statement. I think there was a huge request that he made. And I think the CST allocation is something that he owes to the state. All he's saying is that I've allocated 9,000 crores in the budget. Yeah. I'm coming to the table. You please come to the table. Yeah. And I personally think it's a good time for non-Congress states also to come because now it can only be effective from 2014. So if any other party was also to form the government, I think everyone's got to benefit from this. So in, a, in some ways, this is the most uh, uh, least controversial here to do it. 
but on the taxes side you're absolutely right i think the biggest benefit was on investment allowance uh, i think he has tried to plug in some on the royalty in most of the tax treaties there's a rate of 15% yeah but the rate in the income tax act was actually 10% which is lower than 15% so he so has increased that up by 5% it could, for most in most countries it will actually go up by 5% and not by not by 15% uh, i think they've also plugged in share buyback and all the other things to some extent with some of the companies we're right. doing but i think the the uh, the surcharge both it's not only on super rich but also on companies mm. uh, the surcharge is increased so effectively your tax rate uh, has gone up by roughly 1 and 1/2% percent. Percent. Uh, on ddt it has uh, mm. gone up it will also apply i th i think it will also apply on mat and other things so in some ways there has been an effective increase of tax rate and you're right on surcharge for super rich one was anticipating yeah. 5% i think 10% seems to be on the on higher the high side. side but the but best news is what he has done on the saving side plus what he has done on investment allowance i think uh, bringing the investment allowance back yeah. up to 7 yeah, years because that will be in about you know if you look at 15 crores uh, 15% and that means almost 5 crores for every 100 crores spent so if a company okay. is earning that kind of so okay. you're getting a 5 5% relief on on the investments that you are making i'll get to the super rich tax in just a bit but mr sandhali as far as the auto sector is concerned excise stays the tax on suvs has gone up from 27% to 30% some exemptions are being continued as far as electric vehicles are concerned but on imported vehicles and that's where that's where we actually need clarity while on the bike side it's very clear uh, engines over 800 cc will be taxed higher what are you picking up as far as the clarity on the imported vehicles are concerned so actually you said that imported cbus will be uh, taxed and the, the increase in tax has been annual from 75 to 100%. Uh, to some extent the auto industry has always been saying that the imported vehicle duty should be kept or increase as per custom duty is concerned because we want to promote manufacturing in the country. From that point of view I think it's a welcome move from the auto industry perspective that it will improve manufacturing people will not get CBUs mm. in but it doesn't stop people getting in CKD packs and assembling in the country. Yeah. But, and therefore but, but a big negative as far as SUV makers are concerned. Yeah, as far as SUV excess duty is concerned it is totally unexpected from 27 to 30% is an increase which is uh, yeah. unanticipated. We need to go to the fine prints to find out which are the vehicles which are actually impacted. But I'm happy that he is not distinguished between diesel and petrol, though most of the SUVs are sure, diesel, but still sure. not made a distinction from a fuel perspective. But uh, the increase itself is not necessarily a uh, welcome move. We the need to find out. The positive, though, is in the JNURM, which the yes, continuation the, uh, there and, that, and the, the focus Not on only the continuation, uh, doubling the investment uh, yeah, allocation to JNURM is very good. Crores. We should implement them. I think the problem with us is implementation. Even the last JNURM scheme, the money has not been paid to the state transport and yeah. That overall uh, expanding it and making it uh, Uh, available is a good move from the auto industry perspective from okay. uh, buses commercial vehicles will definitely improve okay, that okay that's the cii view the market in a spot of bother this afternoon 1.5% down for the mid caps uh, so it's really reeling now in terms of an impact for the broader market the breath is very negative and the nifty is now down more than a percent so it's not looking like a great second half for the market uh, lots and lots of faces reacting to the budget and its takeaways but let me go straight to chanda kochur of icici bank because that's the pocket that's been hit the hardest